Hello and welcome to the Orc Hammer YouTube channel. Today we'll be talking about the new Orc War Clans Battletown, and we'll be examining which units have improved and which ones have gotten worse. I'm going to break from my normal format of a spreadsheet, and instead I've compiled all the information into a presentation. So sit back and relax, and let's see what you have to look forward to. Okay, so when I talk about what's improved and what's gotten worse. There's a few different ways we can discuss this. I think there's the objective things we can look at, such as the damage output, which is something you can calculate, the durability, which is also something you can calculate, and the points, which are just numeric values. So when I'm making comparisons, these are the types of things that I, I prefer to speak about. But then there's also subjective things uh, that are worth mentioning. So this would be things like the abilities, the synergies, and, and some points about overall strategy. These are important to the game, but it's very hard to quantify and, and make concrete statements about which one's better. So like, you know, a, a command ability could have changed from the old battle tome to the new, and it might have a severe impact, and you might prefer it, but there's just no way to put into numbers how much better it is than the old one. So it's still worth talking about. I think there's plenty of other people out on the forums and on YouTube that, that will give their opinions subjectively. Uh, I'm trying to focus this channel a bit more on objective truth. So anywhere where I have subjective conclusions, I have I will try to highlight that, and I've put it in the presentation what's subjective and what's not. So let's move on. So before I get into, this is going to be mainly focused on damage output and just on the base war scrolls, but there is a little, a little bit of talk about durability, I think, because it's changed. So the Iron Jaws have their durability not changed in this new battle tome. The only thing that's different is the Maw Crusher and Gordrak have gained a wound. But all the other saves are the same, the wound values are the same, so the Iron Jaws basically didn't change their, their tabletop durability in the slightest. The Bone Splitters, though, notably have. So the way the Bone Splitters save used to work was their glowing tattoos gave them a a six up after save against mortal wounds and if they rolled a six on their normal save roll it was always successful regardless of any rend so instead of that normal save roll of six always being successful that's just rolled over into an after save as well so now you have a universal six up after save and uh so that actually translates to slightly more durability, and um, it's, so it's pretty handy. You also have the War Docs abilities have changed a little bit. So instead of you roll a dice and you had a chance of it getting like a plus, a, 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 I think it used to be a re-roll one to save, now it's you have the option to just pick the, the chance. So you can pick a plus one save roll, and then you have a 66% chance that that will succeed. But the fact that you can have multiple of these war docs, and you can have each one in the place where they need to be, g dishing out the, the most important uh, chant for the situation is, is a big improvement. And I think the, the chant that improves the save rolls is, is worth noting for the bone splitters because th these guys are now very cheap and plus one to save rolls when you have a unit with a six up after save and potentially with shields you know you can have something running around with four up save there's also a spell that can improve the save roll so you can have you know a block of uh, 30 30 bone splitters with three up saves and a six up after save and two wounds each very difficult to get off the table so notably uh, notable improvements on the bone splitter side for durability. The big wah formation is also interesting in that I mean you have to earn the, the big wah points to to get to this level but once you get to a certain number of points then all of your big wah troops can get that after save that the bone splitters have from the beginning. So notably that's interesting because now you can have your iron jaws units like you can have a maw crusher with a six up after save. Uh, and all you need to do is rack up a few big wah points. So that's really interesting for the big wah. Okay, that's, I think, all I have to say about durability. So generally, bone splitters got better. Everybody else kind of stayed the same. But big wah, the whole point of the big wah is you can kind of combine the best of both worlds. You can take the best features of the iron jaws and the best features of the bone splitters. As long as you're able to generate those wah points, you can make things happen. Okay. 
So for the rest of this presentation, we're going to really be focusing on damage output. So there's things such as the the wizards and the war chanters and the arrow boys. Uh, so I, I should say I should really specify melee damage output. So arrow boys are kind of in a class of their own in that they're shooting attack and they really haven't changed much from what I can tell. The old war scroll to the new, so they're basically how you remember them. Um, the war chanters, I have I, I will speak about the war chanters at the very end and and wizards i'm not really going to talk about it because it, it gets into a lot of subjective territory about how the spells have changed and what you like and don't like but um i think from a, a data perspective there, there was a lot more fodder here for me to to go through with just the melee damage profiles so that's what i'm going to be focusing this on and let's look at it, the overall what's changed. So I've colored here three different factors. The um, and things in yellow are iron jaw profiles. Things in green are bone splitter profiles. So um, so we can see on the top line here what has lost, what has stayed the same, and what has gained in average damage output against save uh, five up save opponents. So what I've done is I've calculated. The you know based on the uh, the attack profiles, assuming that they are fighting up against an enemy with a five up save, how much damage on average they should do. The reason I've chose five up save is because that is very uh, very common for like a line infantry with a shield. You know it's pretty rugged, so it, it's a it's one of the more common save values you're going to see in the game, and it also is. Since it is not six or not a no save situation, it it will take into account. It'll let the differences in rend um, show themselves in the data. So, uh, so all of the data. So we need a consistent data point across different attack profiles that we can uh, compare directly with one another. So I've come up with this value of how how the the attack profile performs against save five. So if you can imagine if we are comparing a a rend two with a rend three attack, the the difference in those rend values isn't going to show through. But luckily there's no rend three in this battle tome. There's very little rend three in the game. So but this will show the difference between a no rend, rend one, and rend two situations. Okay. So as you can see, down on the, the bottom end of the scale, there's some Iron Jaws units that have lost in their average damage output. There's ones that have stayed the same, and there's some that have gained, but all of the Bone Splitters have gained. And the things that have gained the most damage output have been Bone Splitters. So really, the Bone Splitters win in this department. Actually, they win in all three of these. The next line down is points per damage so basically that uh, just factoring for all the point changes and and how much points per damage they're doing against five up opponents and how much they've gained or lost the uh, the bone splitters win here as well and on the very bottom is the maximum damage so just imagine you're against you know either a no save opponent or an opponent who fails every one of their saves. So you, if you make every single one of your dice rolls perfectly, your enemy fails every one of their save rolls, and how much damage you can possibly achieve maximum with that attack profile, uh, how that's changed. So in general, Bone Splitters have gotten more raises in their maximum damage output. The Iron Jaws have been more modest, but the lowest increase um, overall was the there was one profile from the bone splitters that that lost the most. Now, losing maximum damage output isn't necessarily a bad thing. It what it this you can imagine that as long as you have so imagine two profiles that are pretty similar that have the same uh, average damage output, but one has a higher maximum damage output. What that means with a higher maximum damage output and the same average damage output is that the, there's going to be more wild swings in terms of what you're going to be uh, dishing out. So sometimes you'll you'll deal out a ton of damage. Sometimes you'll deal out less. So as you get smaller maximum damage for these profiles, while the damage is increasing, what you're getting is more and more consistent damage output. So even as we go through the data, even when we see that certain maximum damages have declined or not increased by very much, it's not necessarily bad. It's just something you need to be aware of. Some of my favorite moments in the game, though, are from 
these crazy high maximum damage scenarios where uh, you know one lone brute boss took out an entire unit or something uh, that's just crazy because all the dice rolls went your way and uh, it just didn't even seem reasonable that one little model could do so much damage but even though it, it just normally doesn't work out that way okay so starting from the end of the list working wait from the losers to the winners like I said taking a damage centric approach to all of this. The biggest loser for us is the regular mega boss on foot. It's kind of sad because he wasn't the most popular unit anyway. He was more popular in lower point value games like 500 and, and 1000 and maybe got a little less popular with uh, meeting engagements since he doesn't move very quickly. Just my op subjective opinion there. But So he used to dish out an average of 5.33 average damage. Now he's dishing out 4.44. And he got more expensive. And um, then notably, he lost his synergy with the Brutes. So he used to automatically give Brutes, Brute units that were within five inches, not wholly within, he would give them plus one to hit. Uh, so lost that synergy. And the new, the new command abilities that he offers is, uh, I think it's a plus one to hit thing. So it's, it's okay. It's not nothing amazing so I think this guy might be a little bit less popular moving forward than he used to be which is sad because it's a cool model and uh, yeah next up uh, working our way up the scale here uh, the next next loser would be the regular brute boss with the claw and smasher now he's still a good unit this thing still does nice amount of damage you can see over two damage uh, on average from this, and this is without a wah or anything like that. So he used to do 2.56 on average, and now he does 2.22 on average. And he's, but the price did decrease. So he, the the points de decreased. So the the decrease we see in the average damage output is actually good because uh, it didn't decrease as much as the points did. So uh, so the points per damage decreased by 10%. Uh, it is notable that he lost the, it used to be when the, the claw, so if the claw would hit and it would grab somebody, then the smasher would auto hit. And the reason this got crazy, and this guy was a real superhero of the Age of Sigmar 2.0, you know, mega wah, uh, mega wah frenzy, was that whenever you loaded up extra attacks onto this guy, so if you, if you can imagine you had like a five, six, seven, or eight wah scenario, you had the more and more chances you get for that claw to hit, then the more you guarantee that that smash is going to auto hit. So if you work out the math, this guy was dishing out once that, um, once you started layering those extra attacks onto this guy, he scaled with the wah better than anybody else. So I, I think I did the math. I think it was somewhere around the 10... The, around the 10 or 11 wall scenario where he actually started to become uh, as good as a maw crusher in terms of his damage output alone. But even before you got to that high, if you just stuck with like an 8 wall scenario, this guy does more damage than most other units by himself. So he went from being a crazy powerhouse to just kind of a, an average reasonable boss choice for your brutes. Okay. I say Gordrak loses. He's still a nice unit, but he is technically doing less damage output than he used to. Um, from the starting profile, I should mention. So his points went up, he's doing less damage, and uh, but there's some good things in that his command ability, I think, is, is more useful now. So it used to be a once-a-game thing that added two two attacks, which sounds nice until you realize how most people are playing the Wah. The Wah used to, I mean, before this Battle Tome, um, if you had enough command points, it's it's not unreasonable to expect that you would get at least six wa six extra attacks for, for the majority of your army the first time you unleash a Wah. I know the, the Iron Jaws army I was playing, uh, I could expect at least one Wah of six, followed by a next turn Wah of at least four, and uh, it had about a 50% chance of getting eight extra attacks on that first big uh, unleash of the Wah energy. So 
when you're t dealing with those extreme numbers of attacks, this uh, his command ability to do a, a paltry two extra attacks just wasn't that impressive. So uh, most of the top tier Iron Jaws lists always took the regular Maw Crushers, but now he's a bit more intriguing with his command ability, and certainly it is just it looks to be kind of an upgraded version of the other Mega Bosses command ability. So it's intriguing, and he gets you a ton of these big Wah. Point. So if you are using the Big Wah Allegiance, Gordrak all of a sudden looks very intriguing. And I should say, the the loser here we're talking about is the, the starting attack profile. Now, it, the, the way it used to be to increase the damage of his Smasha and Cunning weapons is you had to kill, with that weapon, you had to kill um, a specific type of, of unit. So now, instead of having to kill a hero or a wizard, depending on which smasher or cunning, to get a plus one to the attack of that weapon, now, as long as you've killed a model, you get plus one to the attack of, uh, I believe, both of them. And But if you do kill a hero or a wizard with the smasher or cunning, I forget which one's which, then you the attack ends and they suffer mortal wounds. So it is still preferred one of them prefers heroes the other one prefers wizards but you don't have to kill them to get that extra plus one to attack so i think the net result of this attack profile is that the more turns you get this guy into combat he's as long as you have him killing at least one model per combat phase he's going to uh quickly ratchet up the the damage output that he's dishing out so I, overall, I think I, I like the improvements to Gordrak, even though technically he is he has gone backwards a little bit from his starting profile. All right, things that are, that are unchanged is basically all the other brutes. They actually have the same average damage output. The only thing that's really changed is the Gorchapo's max damage has come down. So what that means is that he is, and the, the Gorchapo is the special, the guy with the, the the huge, the one on the top right here with the the huge you know, plank of metal as a weapon. His maximum damage has come down, which means that, and since the average damage is the same, that means he's putting out a more consistent, reliable stream of damage as opposed to wild swings of huge amounts and low amounts of damage. So not a bad thing. The average points of everything came down because the unit for five of them used to be 180. Now it's, I think actually might've been 170 the last GHB. So now it's 140 for five. So I think we might, it looks like we're going to be entering the era again of entirely brute-based armies starting to be rolled out. And just a quick note that Duff Up the Big Thing used to be re-rolled, failed, uh, I think it was re-rolled, failed hit rolls. Now it's plus one to hit uh, against big enemies that have four or more wounds. All right, things that are starting to gain now from this new profile. The R boys ha uh, see a very slight increase uh, from 0.67 average damage now to 0.74. So this is the one with the two weapons. So this used to be, I think in the very first releases of Sigmar and the old Battle Tome, these guys were the clear winners because uh, in the, the old days used to only the extra attack, the WA ability was only, uh, was only one attack because you could only do it once per turn and it of a maximum of two extra attacks. So up to two extra attacks. At at two extra attacks, the two-handed the two the two weapon version of the Ard Boys performed about, about the same as the 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 great weapon, the uh, the two-handed weapon. At one extra attack, the two the two weapon version outperformed the the great weapon and at no extra attacks, also the the two the two weapon version outperforms. So um, for the early phases of Iron Jaws, these guys were actually mathematically the, the superior choice. The things are all kind of evened out now and it, there's no real separation. So if you built a whole bunch of these, then what you have from your old army to your new army now is a, a slight increase. Okay. One thing to note, though, is that you can now tack a shield onto a bunch of these guys, so you get two shields in your every model of, or uh, every unit of five. So two out of every five models can have a shield, and it does not lower the attack profile. So it used to be you could take as many as you want, but you basically 
the guy that had the shield wasn't doing very much damage output. So now it's just they're better durability overall because you can have two out of every five with a shield and there's no penalty for that. So I think the market for little orc shields has, has gone up for this uh, because now now you need to scramble, find all the shields that you probably threw away from the last edition and try to stick them on hard boys as much as you can. Okay. Next up is the Savage Big Boss. So he has gained about 20% more damage. He's up from 3.7 to 4.44 against uh, five up save enemies. He's had a nice point decrease, and now he's sitting at I think 100 points, pretty handy. And uh, but notably, his his maximum damage is down 40 percent. So if you remember on that that line where I, I colored in what's increased and what's decreased, there was a notable bone splitter green all the way at the left. This is the the biggest lowering of maximum damage potential. Um, of all the profiles in this battle tome. So now he's pumping out very reliable damage in the middle of the road, as opposed to he had, you know, he could have a good day out and, and dish out tons of damage or or whiff a whole bunch of them. So if you're like me and you, you whiff almost all of your dice rolls, then maybe this is a good change. But it does remove those times where it can be memorable gaming moments when it the dice go all in your your favor and this guy all of a sudden was dishing out ridiculous amounts of damage that's not going to happen anymore but uh, overall I think a more reliable and cost-effective choice than it used to be the R boys with the big choppers like I said this uh, these guys used to underperform the the two weapons and um, then they started outperforming the two weapons once Age of Sigmar 2.0 came out and you had command points and then the tactic with Iron Jaws was to load up as many of these extra wah attacks as you could. Then all of a sudden that plus one rin that these guys had over the um, the two weapon version, that the advantage of that started to overtake the extra attack that the two weapon version had. So these guys were kind of the heroes the hero art boys of the Iron Jaws faction immediately before the release of this battle tome. But they've had a slight increase here. So uh, from, and this is only comparing no extra attacks. This is not taking extra attacks into account, but based on their uh, blank profile, um, up from 0.56 average damage to 0.74, so that's a nice 32% increase. And they had a, they have had a point increase. So now, now the base unit is five, and if you take ten of them, it's 180, whereas it used to be 140. So they're actually a good bit more expensive than they used to be. The maximum damage output is the same, but you know uh, that's why you have war chanters now. War chanters double all that. So um, these guys can can still put on a hurt as long as you're buffed correctly. And remember, just like with the two weapon version, you can get two shields out of every five models for free. So, you know, get some plastic card, make your own shields if you have to. But you should absolutely be, if you want to play this competitively, you need to be taking two shields per five models. No questions asked. Okay. Next up, the Gore Grunta with Choppa. So this is the, the one-inch weapon. This had his damage increased 33%, up from 1.11 to 1.48. And his so the, the range of damage output it, he can output has been increased a little bit as well. So he's up 14.29 in his maximum damage. And notably here, I think the charge rule is better than it used to be. So it used to be um, something that I almost never tried to get. So if you had made a charge from 8 inches away... Um, not just like a charge roll of eight or more, but like actually moved eight inches on that charge, then I think it was the 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 pig got uh, plus one to hits and wounds or something. Oh, no, no, maybe it was the damage was D3 instead of one. Anyway, um, it, was an, it was a nice little advantage, but it made, it, it wasn't worth like deliberately um, staying at that eight inch range just to try to get a few extra points of damage. It was, you know, in any good Iron Jaws player was, you know, trying to do, do the best they could to get as close as possible to make sure they had a guaranteed charge and then doing their charge. So if you, if you were in that situation where you, you 
had to make an eight inch or more charge and you did, then fine. But it wasn't a cornerstone of the strategy. But now they've changed the rules. So um, this thing is uh, just always better on the charge. It doesn't have to be a specific range. But the way they're changing spears in general in the game seems to be, or at least mounted cavalry spears, it means that uh, if you take a spear or like a, you know, a two inch weapon on a mount, then that also then that spear also gets the gets some bonus when it when it does a charge. So while this version, the Choppa version of the Gorgonto, has improved, it hasn't improved quite as much as the version with the spear because of the the way they seem to be doing the spear rules now. All right, moving on, the big stab has had a, a slight improvement as well. So they're up thirty three percent against normal enemies, and these guys. Bone splitters in general have always been, uh, they've had special bonuses against monsters, so specifically against monsters, these guys are dishing out 40% uh, more damage. So, so it used to be 2 damage against normal enemies on average, and now it's 2.67. used to be 3.33 against monsters, now it's 4.67. That's a, a lot of damage, that's really good. But these things are 50 points a model, so... Pretty elite, but uh, really good damage output, even for what you pay. It's just good stuff. Um, same maximum damage potential, but it gets, it's uh, moved from being a random characteristic, I think, to a, a fixed. And notably, they've gained run and charge, which is really cool. It's the only thing we have in the entire battle tome that has that. So unfortunately, it's not a very fast-moving unit but the bone splitters do have a spell that can give you they can double your movement or potentially triple it so it can be a threat all right next up the boarborn maniacs have had a nice increase and i'm calling things in the solid winners which would, would be um things that are 50 percent or more increase but under 100 so boarborn maniacs these have a, they distinguish themselves if they have more, five or more models, so like a full full unit or a double size unit or anything above a standard full unit. So if they're under a full unit, then it's 56% more damage than they used to. And that, that's a new rule. They didn't used to, to make a distinction if it was under five models or what. So, um, so even if... The worst case scenario, it's only like one or two guys. They're still dishing out more damage than they used to. But best case scenario, you have a full unit or more. They're dishing out way more damage than they used to. 84.62% more damage than they used to. The maximum damage is also up 66 and 75% respectively. So you're, you're having a bit more swings in damage. But with such big increases in the average damage, I don't mind the big swings there. Notably here with all of the bone splitters pigs is that they're now moved 12 whereas they used to be moved 9 and that's crazy. So it used to be you had if you wanted to get more movement out of them you had to take like the Ice Bones War Clan and the big benefit of the Ice Bones War Clan which was a 200 point battalion is that it gave you plus 2 to your boars movement. So now all the boars have plus 3 for free. So really big big bonuses here to all of the bone splitters boars. The bone splitters with the stickers, like I said, I think they are really um, trying to push people to use more spears on their mounts than uh, swords and things like that. So a lot of the things that are coming out now seem to have special rules for charging with spears, which, which makes sense from a war game perspective. So these guys are up 66.67% on their damage. Their average damage was 0.5, now it's 0.83 per model. And that, that number factors in the damage from the pig as well as from the orc. So altogether, that's how much it's increased. And they've gone up a little bit in, in the, the standard board boys are now 130 per unit of five. They used to be five. Um, and notably, they've lost what used to be the cool special thing about Boar Boys was they used to be able to retreat and charge. Uh, so they've lost that. But they've lost that, but they've gained extra damage. And uh, so now it's it's a lot more of a tough 
the the Boar Boy Maniacs are only 10 points more, and these guys don't have their retreat and charge, so it's a lot more... They're, they're a lot closer of a unit to the Boar Boy Maniacs, and I think the... On the other end of the scale, the the regular Savage Orcs have maybe split away from the the more boys a little bit, so they've differentiated themselves more, and the Boar Boys have kind of become more and more similar to the Maniac versions. So uh, weird things going on in Bone Splitter Land. Okay, the more boys. They have increased as well, 71%. Uh, pretty close. So they, they do change their, their damage if uh, an enemy monster is killed. And this is notable in that it used to just be a monster was killed. Now the War Scrolls are, are being picky and they're saying that an enemy monster needs to be killed. So there's no more of uh, just throwing in a... Um, a gargant into your list at the front lines and you know hurling him forward letting him die so that your your huge units of more boys can all get buffed and become elite infantry so that's not a thing anymore but if an enemy monster it has been killed then they do get a nice increase but the increase is pretty much um consistent with the overall damage increase so these used to be 0.52 damage now they're 0.89 um with a monster kill, the without a monster kill, it used to be 0 0.39. Now it's 0 0.67. So nice, nice increases of damage, but um, but modest compared to some other bone splitter units, as we'll see here in a minute. The maximum damage has increased, and uh, notably, they've lost their maximum unit size bonus. So they're still 120 for 10, and the savage orcs are also 120 for 10. But now the savage orcs are still 300 for 30, and these guys don't have that that bonus. So now they're 360 for 30 instead of 300 like they used to be. So the maximum unit size is uh, you don't get a you don't get a bonus for for bringing a max of these anymore. So moving on. The Boar Boys with the Chompa, so this would be with the shield and the the regular non-spear weapon. So they've had an increase as well, uh, 78.56. And so it's up, you know, from 0.56 to now an average of one damage per per model against five up saves. And they've also, as I mentioned before, they've lost retreat and charge. Okay, Savage Orcs with Stickas. So these have a rule now that, that specifies that things change once they have 15 or more models. So if we're talking about if you used to carry a unit of 10 um, or something like that, how I'm going to compare the old small unit versus the new large unit, So, or versus the new small unit. So if we're talking about less than 15 models, then your unit has increased its damage by 94%. 0.12%, which is great. So these used to be extremely pillow fisted, dishing out only 0.17 average damage against five ups. Um, so now they're they're not tremendous. It's 0.33 average damage against five ups. But you have to remember that these are two inch weapons, so they're, you're probably going to get two ranks of combat in. And um, but if you only have ten of them or less than 15, then maybe depending on what you're fighting against, you might not have. Uh, that many ranks of two fighting it's you know it could be really spread out so anyway the maximum damage is upped by a hundred percent because well the average they usually just doubled the number of attacks in this unit and uh, so that's why we have the average damage increasing by almost a hundred percent and the the maximum damage increasing by so much as well they're now noticeably more durable than the more boys. So this is an interesting point in that the way the save used to work is it used to be save rolls of six, unmodified six, was always successful. Now it's an after save. So since it used to be save rolls faction wide of six were always successful, that meant that any type of rend one attack against your savage orcs or your more boys um, could always be saved on a six. Well, the more boys had a save of six, and the savage orcs with the shields had a save of five. 
Well, if you're, if there, since there's so much Rend 1 in the game, what that ended up meaning was that more boys had the same effective or very similar effective durability to the Savage Orcs because um, the more boys save of 6 up versus the save of 5 up here didn't really translate to any real difference in the game when you're fighting enemies that have Rend on their weapons. But now, since it's an after save, that the difference is a little bit more clear between the two. So these guys do now have uh, noticeably more durability even against Rend opponents. Not against Rend 2 opponents, but there's not a whole lot of those floating around anyway. So um, I think this is a nice day for Savage Orcs with Stickers, even if you're talking about in small units. The only solid winners from the Iron Jaw side of the table would be the Mega Boss on Maw Crusher. So there's two different attack profiles here. So the first one, the one that has gained the least, would be the Choppa with Rip Tooth, but it's still a, a huge, huge increase here. 98.68% damage increase. And uh, it used to be 6.04. So this is, uh, it's from 6.04 now up to an, just an even 12 average damage against 5-ups. It has had a point increase of 40 points, but that's obviously worth it when you figure points per damage. You know, it's almost double the damage for just a slight increase in points. And has had higher maximum damage output, so the, the, uh, a little bit more wild with the, the damage you're doing. But it is, I guess it's actually the same ratio of uh, maximum damage to average damage. It's just... Um, everything slid up the scale. It's just d dishing out more punishment than it used to, which is crazy because this thing used to dish out a ton of punishment anyway. But I think that the big wah, the or the, not the big wah, but like what I, I would call the mega wah of like loading up, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine uh, extra attacks in a single turn. That's gone away. That's not a possibility anymore. But many profiles such as this have all just gotten better with their base, and you you. You have to com you have to combine several different synergies now to make to get those those same levels of uh, crazy damage being outputted. So if you combine this guy with like a, a war chanter war chant, you know, to give him plus one damage, um, and then you can add plus one to his hits and plus one to his wounds through the the big wah. Now now he's you know on the same level of uh, damage output that he used to be with um, you know eight extra attacks per per weapon okay the savage orcs with the champa so this will be the 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 non-spear weapons with a shield sorry for using the bone totem guy here but i there was no digital art asset on their website of a uh, a regular guy with a shield and uh a small weapon so i just used the bone totem to represent him Okay, so these guys have had a hundred percent damage increase. Like I said, they've just doubled their um, uh, number of attacks with their melee weapon, and up from you know from one to two. And so it used to be 0.22, now it's 0.44. They're doing they're the same number of points, so that brings them down fifty percent in their points per damage, and. Um, since they have the shields, like I said, just same same way with the the stickers, they are noticeably more durable than the more boys. So, so there's not those scenarios where, like I said, like you're just kind of hitting yourself on the head, wishing you had brought more boys instead of uh, savage orcs. There's there's a, a place, there's a real home for savage orcs, and that is just durability. Okay. The most improved of the Mega Boss on Maw Crusher profiles would be the Gore Hacker and Scrap Tooth, so he's up a whopping 124%. So he used to dish out an average of 5.81, now he's dishing out an average of 13.04. That's crazy. Um, you know, he's, like I said, he's, it's 50 points more expensive than it used to be, but with that, that much damage output, it, it brings his points per damage way down. Okay. Now let's get into the territory of big winners. And by big winners, I would say, I guess the last one should have been a big winner. Um, things that are 100% or more improved. So more boys, if you have a, a unit of 15 or more. And if 
and there's just a difference here if the enemy monster has been killed or not, but it's all around 128% increase. So it used to be, if a monster was killed, it used to be 0.52, now it's 1.19. If there was no monster killed, it used to be 0.39 average damage, now it is 0.89. So they, they, this rule about 15 or more models didn't used to be a thing. So not only have they added this rule, but um, but they've increased even on the less than fifteen model versions. They've they've increased the the damage output. So if you have more than fifteen, you're just way you're just stratospherically above the damage output that you used to be with this unit. Okay, but they have once again lost that maximum unit unit size bonus. So maximum units now three sixty points as opposed to three hundred. And the monster kill condition is now specifically enemy monsters, not just any monster. So you can't necessarily control it. There's a lot of armies out there that don't bring monsters at all. So you might uh, don't rely on this extra damage. But you're doing such good damage even without killing a monster that I don't think that'll be too much of a problem for you. The biggest winners, I would say, easily the Savage Orcs across the entire battle tome. The guys with the stickers, particularly if you have a big model uh, unit, they're up around 200%. So it used to be 0.17 average damage against five. So these were guys were, like I said, just pillow fisted. I mean, you, know, you could potentially kill enemies, but it was almost uh, a fluke if you did. They, they did such pitiful damage. They used to do one attack each with four up, four up. Uh, attack profile. No rend, one damage. It was just terrible. Like some of the worst infantry in the game for, for damage output. But now, with 15 or more, you're dealing three damages per... You're dealing, I'm sorry, three attacks per orc. So that's um, that's crazy. It's three, you know, three times what it used to be, or, you know, 200% increase. Now it's... Uh, 0.5 average damage versus 5 up. And I guess this should be exactly 200 now that I'm thinking about it because that is uh, just a rounding error probably that got me under 200. Oops. It's just a, a rounding error that took it under 200. So the maximum damage is up, the average damage is up, and they're, they're significantly more durable. They are noticeably more durable than the more boys so it used to be more boys seemed to like just a better choice across the board now these guys really have their own place and since we're talking about large units you know units with 15 or more models um, I think these stickers are really good because you're gonna have across your your entire frontage potentially you're gonna have two people engaged you are gonna have two full ranks engaged the enemy as opposed to one that means every you know, for every base of frontage in your unit, you're going to have six attacks going into the enemy. Um, so if you, you know, you have this unit against, on the other side of it, um, an exact same width unit of, let's say, more boys, the more boys are going to have five attacks coming into you, but you have six attacks going back into them. And uh, so I think... I think the stickers are really nice for the large models. I think it's probably my favorite unit in the whole battle tome as far as what's improved because it's made this what is a nice durable, you know, board control, objective swarming kind of unit now a serious threat in the damage department. But technically I think the Chompas do edge it out maybe slightly um like maybe actually this is rounding error as well it should be exactly 200 um so they're also, they've gained a lot of damage output, but they are only one inch weapons. So um, you're not going to get those two ranks in in combat if you have the, the large unit size. And uh, But they still have that same durability. So overall, I think Savage Orcs by far gained the most, even though it doesn't seem like it when you're, you know, they haven't seen a lot of people really going nuts over the Savage Orcs and the forums or anything like that. But they went from one attack now to three attacks with the same profile so that is uh, a noticeably better that's a, it's a huge bonus to their damage output okay other subjective winners i would say the war chanter this is there's no way to quantify this but 
His buff used to be plus one to hit, now it's plus one to damage. And for Iron Jaws that have a whole lot of profiles that are, you know, one damage profiles, this basically doubles the damage output. So this will double, double the damage output of Ard Boys. It'll double the damage output of your of your basic Brutes because they're also like one damage each. Um, so, or uh, I think Gorgruntas as well. Like if you talk about the Choppas and the Gorgruntas, so really big for most of your Iron Jaws units. This guy is just going to flat out just double what they can do. And uh, the War Chanter is also a big big deal because he gives you two big Wa points. So if you're looking at that big Wa allegiance, you want to maximize the number of Wa points you're generating every turn. And Gordrak is very attractive because he gives you six per turn, and these guys give you two each for only 110 points. So he is more expensive than he used to be, but I think subjectively, my opinion is that the, the benefits he's giving you now are worth those 30 points, and I wouldn't be surprised if I see more War Chanters and lists going forward. And also with the the strategy of Iron Jaws being less Megawa centric, it used to be everything in your list had to, if you wanted to play competitively at least, everything in your list had to be there for the purpose of getting as many extra attacks as possible or consuming those extra attacks to dish out damage. And uh, that was how you had to orient your whole army. So now there's a lot more flexibility, and I think that's going to translate into more War Chanters running around the field. And the War Docs have also, on the Bone Splitter side, they've had a noticeable increase here. The, they're cheaper, they're down from 100 points to 80, and they're still nice wizards and they have access to really cool spells. But the fact that it used to be you had to roll a dice and there was three, you know, three possibilities, and there was probably a situation that was there was always one of those possibilities is the one that you wanted. Like, oh, I really need a little bit more durability on a unit nearby, or I really need to heal my hero, or something like that. You had a one in three chance of getting the buff that you you need, so they weren't all that useful, and a lot of people didn't end up taking that many of them. Now you you always get to pick the dance that you want, so you always get to 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 play them perfectly for the, the scenario that you're in, and then you roll a dice, and you have a two-thirds chance of, of getting that result to to succeed. So um, in my brief playtesting experience, I think these guys have, have, I'm just way more happy with these guys now because I can use them. Like I have one following around my Wurgog Prophet and he's dishing out the plus one to cast buff and I have ones following around my big blocks of infantry dishing out the plus one to save. Um, and even if they fail it, I know at least I didn't just waste their existence you know they're not like healing they're not doing the healing dance when and when i don't need it or something else like that so i think these guys have gotten a lot more effective even though there's, it's impossible for me to quantify it so the overall verdict i think it's a good day to be an orc player this is a great battle tome it's going to be a good thing for us and it's a great day to be a bone splitters player everybody's pretty much gotten a little bit better except the poor mega boss but the bone splitters across the board have gotten better in every way. It's they're finally, I think, a good competitive. You, there's going to be a lot more competitive bone splitters play that is not arrow boy spam, cun and ruck spam. They're just a legit force now. So hope you enjoyed, and uh, I'll see you next time.